Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're gonna talk about some data that came out about debt levels in Canada and how Canada carries the most household debt versus any G7 country, how that affects the real estate market, and I'm also gonna give you a bit of a market update, feed on the street perspective of what's happening in the market, and I sense that it's changing. Real quick before we get started, if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Hassan, I'm a Vancouver real estate agent, and I make this educational real estate content to help you on your real estate journey. I also make content designed to help you make your move in and around Vancouver. So if that sounds interesting to you and you wanna to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can book me in the Calendly link below. Outside of that, subscribe to this channel though so you don't miss a future video. So some extremely significant news that has come out from the CMHC or significant pieces of data that Canada as a G7 country, we have the highest household debt level out of any of the G7 countries. And in fact, our debt level is 107% that of our GDP, our gross domestic product, basically our goods and services essentially. So our debt is 107% of that and of which 75% of that is in mortgages. So what can we actually take from this data? Well, number one, obviously mortgage rates have gone up, interest rates have gone up, so it's, it's understandable to see how our debt levels, our household debt has gone up. But the other way to look at it is back when the pandemic started, rates were exceptionally low. We had the Bank of Canada encouraging spending, saying make that investment, purchase that property, Rates are going to be low for a very long time, so Canadians were being encouraged to spend money, pull money from their home equity line of credits, they're purchasing second properties, etc., adding to the debt, and then obviously now with rates increasing, we're in a scenario where you know other G7 countries, I think they're typically around the 80%-ish towards their GDP if they're looking at their household debt. We're at 107%, ours is growing, whereas other countries uh, is diminishing, it's getting a little bit smaller. So another thing that we can take from this data or specifically the mortgage interest rates climbing up is today's buyer, this affects who today's buyer is in the market. And this is what I'm experiencing from a feed on the street perspective. We, we had last year quite a few people that were considering looking at that upsize move, selling the condo, selling the townhome, moving into a detached, we had that slow period towards the end of last year where this would have made some sense. And last year and this year, the big thought process that's going through these upsizers is if they're holding an older, in, uh, an older mortgage rate, they're being a lot more cognizant and thoughtful about whether they're gonna make that upsize move because you know, even if they port that mortgage, they're gonna be subject to a higher rate, a blended rate between today's rate and what they had from before. So, you know, they may be on 1.8, 1.9%, 2%, and now they're gonna have to jump into that, you know, high fours, 5%, get that blended rate. And when you're moving up in property, of course, you're spending more for the property. Now you're spending more on that mortgage rate. So people are having to be a lot more thoughtful about that upsize move. Uh, in my world with my clients, I still have quite a few clients that are considering moves uh, out of province or into other areas in the province, whether that be for work, whether it be for a slower lifestyle. I have a client right now looking at Sunshine Coast, selling here and moving to the Sunshine Coast. Another one looking at Victoria. For these people that are making moves strategically, uh, lifestyle moves, things that are really, things that they have to do essentially, whether that's for a new job or, or what they need to do for their family, then yeah, it's making a lot of sense for them. But people that are, on the fence, ho hoeing and humming, I guess you would say, uh, they are, a lot of them are choosing to stand pat. And so this whole inventory thing that we've talked about on my channel over and over again, it's uh, self-fulfilling. It's a bit of a self-fulfilling problem because you know these upsizers are not listing their properties, so that's keeping the inventory low. And they're not doing it because they can't buy their next property, potentially because there's not a lot of inventory there as well outside of the changes in rates. So there's so many different factors that are coming into the real estate market, uh, playing out in terms of a lot of people standing pat, and again, that's keeping inventory levels low, but I have a feeling that that might change as we move into the summer. So as a real estate agent who works with buyers everywhere, I have MLS home searches set up for virtually every area in the Fraser Valley, the lower mainland, uh, and every product type. So I have searches set up for clients, and every time a listing hits that meet a certain criteria, 
I'll get an email about it. And what I noticed this week in particular, and we did come off of a long weekend, but what I did notice is that Monday, Tuesday, my phone has not buzzed with as many notifications for new listings like that in a long time. The reason I mentioned the long weekend is we as real estate agents, real estate agents that you know, know what they're doing. We don't list properties heading into a long weekend uh, unless time is a constraint for the seller. So we'll, we will wait for that long weekend to pass. We'll list after the long weekend so we can have a successful open house. Open houses during long weekends uh, tend to be slower than other, other open houses. So the reason I mentioned that we're coming off a long weekend is it's quite normal to see an uptick in listings after that long weekend because people have held out. Uh, but having said that, I can recall from Easter long weekend, I didn't see this type of an uptick and this type of an activity level for new listings. So yes, yeah, a small sample size in terms of duration or period of time. But the minute I start feeling these sort of things in the market and talking with buyers and other agents, I get on the phone with my agent colleagues as well. And we're all kind of feeling uh, a little bit of a not necessarily a softening, but a stabilizing. And I think we might see that heading into the summer. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that we talked about how we've made back a lot of the losses or the price drops, I guess you could say in Metro Vancouver the last year. We've made back a lot of that this year. Uh, prices have increased consistently January, February, March, April. They can't keep going up forever. I think we're starting to see even more inventory hit the market. That tenant occupied property, that's gonna be the inventory story in my opinion for the rest of the year. I'm seeing so many tenanted properties hit the market. They're often really tough to get into, uh, but they are opportunities for buyers as well to get into the market to, to target these properties that are tough to get into. The other thing is I just mentioned the long weekend. If you're a buyer that wants to get into the market this year, circle those long weekends on your calendars. Don't go out of town. I know it's a big sacrifice to make, but that's when you're going to find your deals. I was working with one of my clients during Easter long weekend. We saw a listing pop up on the Thursday before a long weekend. So already that's a listing to keep an eye on because there's not a lot of time before that open house for that property to be marketed to reach as many eyes. On that Thursday, people are already thinking about the long weekend. Saturday rolls around, they do an open house, the weather's terrible, my clients go to the open house, they like it. That night we're submitting an offer. We were up against one other offer, but had this property been listed after the long weekend on a Monday or a Tuesday, gone to weekend open houses and went to offers, it would have received five or six offers we were up against one other offer. We got it below the asking price. We got it about $20,000 below the assessed value and probably about fifteen dollars to $20,000 less than it was actually worth. So keep that in mind. If you're buying properties, you wanna look for those tenanted properties if you're open to them because if they're tenanted at lower rates, the investors don't want them. So you're canceling out a huge section of your competition by going after that property and stay in town for the long weekend. Make sure your agent is there to help you to show you these properties because uh, that's when you're going to nab a deal when everyone else wants to take a bit of a break. So to circle things back and I always like to take a bit of a forward look what can we basically determine is going to happen for the summer market. I think that so much of it is going to come down to the Bank of Canada rate announcement in the middle of June. Uh, I would say that this is the most important announcement from the Bank of Canada for this year. Uh, we're coming off a couple of rate pauses and I, I believe based on my experiences that this is what has caused that feeling of stability amongst buyers in the market and that's what has helped to cause this sort of a spring rush. I also think that this is one of the first years since COVID where We've gone back to that spring market scenario. Now, keep in mind when pandemic hit, all of the norms of real estate were thrown out the window, right? Everyone was expecting the market was gonna tank. The Bank of Canada was, the government was, they were flooding the country with money, they were worried, and all of a sudden, real estate starts taking off. And in 2021, uh, real estate kept taking off January, February, March. There was no longer this distinction of spring market being hotter. It was just hot. And I feel like now, 2023, we're actually starting to experience some level of normalcy, normalcy in terms of how the market generally operates in Vancouver. So I feel like we're kind of coming off that spring market outside, another sunny day, 
best May I've experienced in terms of weather. It feels like summer. And in the real estate market, it's starting to feel like summer. So I think the Bank of Canada, if they hold pat, I think that's gonna allow this buyer activity to continue. But again, if we see this increase in supply, and when I say increase in supply, we're nowhere near levels uh, of years past. So I'm not saying we're gonna have all of a sudden this mass amount of inventory hit. But compared to what we're used to over the last couple of years, I think we're gonna see a bit of a balancing in that sense. Now, if the Bank of Canada comes out and they raise the rate, which I don't believe they will. Uh, the Bank of Canada, Tiff Macklin, came out last time and he said, look, we didn't hit our inflation, the expectation, but that was a blip and we're still on track to meet the goal, meet our target. He came out and said that. So in my eyes, that's him prefacing, saying, don't be surprised when we hold the rate. So I believe they're gonna hold the rate, but if they don't, that sense of stability for buyers, it is now removed. And I think a lot of buyers are gonna say, hold on a sec maybe we should take a bit of a pause. Mortgage rates are increasing this week. Fixed rates are going up. Bond yields are going up. So this is something to keep an eye on. Like I said, the most important announcement in my opinion of the year. Uh, so we're gonna obviously watch that with close eyes. And on this channel, I will update you guys in terms of what happens when it happens as always. So there you have it guys. I hope that you learned something in this video or you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button because what that does is it takes the video and it sends it out to more people so they can learn from it as well. If you're in the Vancouver area and you wanna talk about your real estate situation, book me in the Calendly link below. We can chat for 30 minutes or you can send me a text, give me a call, shoot me an email. Always accessible for you if you have any questions, so reach out to me. But I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great week ahead and I look forward to seeing you in next week's video.